Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here in another daily fix, except we're not fixing today. Instead, Christmas has come a little earlier for me than usual. Out here, you normally expect Christmas to arrive a couple of weeks after, usually in the new year. But I got this in the mail today, so I'm very happy. Now you're wondering, what is this? This is my new multimeter. So it's the bench top one. So I'm going to be very curious to see how this works, especially after I just spent last night writing the software or finishing the software for the handheld one. So it looks like we've got ourselves a new project. So let's get into it and see what it looks like. Alrighty, proper serious straps there. I'm not going to go AV into it, I'm just going to be a normal person and curse about the fact that I can't find a proper pair of scissors, so I'm going to use my very expensive snips. Uh, they're not snips. Ah, oh, yes they are actually. <sighs> They're just, these are the ones I use for the iPhone 6 and 6S shields, or the 6S shields. Do not use them for your toenails or fingernails, things like that. It'll be just disappointment. Ow! Yep, I know my address is on there. That's just my business address. Let's get this out of the way. I can see why people just go all crazy and dig right into these things with power saws and big knives. I'm going to stick with a little surgical knife. Actually, it's not a surgical knife, it's an exacto. Which is somewhat different to surgical knives. Alright. What have we got? A bag of trash. Uh, yeah, just take that out. A warning maintenance procedures must always be performed by a qualified person. Am I a qualified person? Probably not. Ah, a Chinese-Australian power cord. You can always tell they're the Chinese ones, because China does use the same connector we do. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. Get that out of here. This is bigger than I thought it was going to be. Let's have a look at its butt first. So what do we got? Serial port. Looks like a fuse 240 volt, that's good. 230 volt selection, excellent. Uh, already starting to go that uh, sickly yellow color. I'm not a great fan of that uh, color, but oh well, what are you gonna do? What's this? This is gonna be a useless stand. I don't think we'll be using that at all. Well, it's a nice size, that's for sure. Why are you different? I think you're a fused milliamp. So, for the in purposes of what we're doing, we'll basically just be using these two ports, predominantly the diode continuity mode. I saw somewhere that someone was complaining that the diode and continuity was a merged function on this and funnily enough, even though they're complaining about it, I consider that a feature because it's nice to be on diode mode and also have continuity at the same time. Again, it's because of the style of the work that we do as board repair. Uh, class. It's a shame it didn't have USB interface but you can't have everything. So what's the trick with these power cables and why are they different to the Australian standard ones? Well, I'll show you since I find an Australian standard one. I can't find a good example, but one of the first things you really notice is that the Australian ones now have these uh, safety limits on the uh, active and neutral pins so that when you're pulling it from the plug, if you happen to be a bit of an idiot and stick your fingernails in there trying to yank it out, you don't get yourself a nice little short because by the time the uh, pin has disconnected from the socket, that is when it will start to be exposed out of the plug in the, uh, the socket in the wall. Whereas these ones, they stay f fully connected the whole way out, uh, at least far away out enough that you can get yourself a bit of a shock. The other way is that this is different is the uh, orientation. They seem to, we would plug it in, so this is the bottom and that's the top. So if you look at Australian plugs, 
they look like that on the wall whereas I think the Chinese one seems to be like that on the wall so they're 180 degrees turned but other than that they uh, fit perfectly fine so uh, it's a bit of a convenience because Australia isn't a very big country of course with only about 25 million people so we don't represent much of a market so the fact that the Chinese use the same socket as us helps things immensely particularly with fully corded products ones that don't have an IEC connector uh, let's see 80,000 counts yeah I have my doubts about how accurate that's going to be but again accuracy is not really the key for a lot of our board repair work we just really want results to be within 1% of what we're after rather than 0 0.05 or 0 0.02 even yeah, let's see thermocouple junk oh, I don't know if it really is junk but I admit these probes are a little better than I thought they were going to be yeah the the tips aren't so bad they're not really that sharp but you can always sharpen them up but the flex is very rather stiff I do prefer my Hirschman flex uh, these are high temperature silicon 60 volt 16 amp but you don't have a lot of resistance fighting you as you try to move the cables around the pin uh, probes around whereas these you can feel it's already fighting so they're just going to go straight into the bin really what's this little banana clips bin what about this serial cable that will probably also go in the bin because I'm most likely just going to put an adapter straight onto this side of it and then run USB back to the PC. Alright, well that's the boring side of things. Can we get into this? That's what I want to know. I'm going to have a look inside. Should I have powered this up first? Probably. Am I going to change my mind now? Probably not. Oops. The old Stanley screwdriver jumping out a bit there. Just going to put this back on in its supposedly correct orientation before I make a mess of things too much. There we go. If you're hoping for a Dave Jones style of intellectual review, you're not going to get it. If you're hoping for an AVE style review, you're not going to get it. Oop, oh, here we go. Alright. Oh, nice. We've got a free plastic spring coil there. Uh, so, yeah, this is pretty much as expected. We ourselves a 9 volt transformer. Let's see. 9 volt, 0.9 amp, so 10 watt roughly. The whole multimeter really isn't just in this front section. We've got a physical separation for the switch. And we've got a LM7809. Oh, okay, so it's. This is the 7809. So we're producing 9 volts out of here. Interesting, they're kind of cutting that fine a bit there with the transformer. Normally you'd like to have a few more volts overhead. So 9 volts there. Eh? I think we could easily improve on this. I mean the discrete diode rectifier. We've got 470 microfarad caps. We could probably throw a few more on there just to give it a little more filtering, particularly on the output side. Um, I'm fairly sure there's no filtering there until it gets into here. And then we've got probably a thousand or something similar. What else we got? We've got a buzzer there. 
I recognize that sort of thing quite a lot because I used to go through thousands of those. That will probably get silenced before I go too far. Is it serial port? Well, that there is simply a direct cabling. So if there's isolation, it's happening up here. Fair enough. My stand has already come out a bit funny. Gotta fix that up. Alright, the box is back up, but uh, definitely I would say that DC input stage or the AC to DC converter, that could be improved upon. I was thinking I might get one of those, you can get a monolith transformer block now and you just simply put your 240 volt in and you get your desired voltage out, in this case it will be 9 volts and it's already filtered, ready to go and it uses switch mode and as far as I know they, the ones I've been looking at they are also galvanically isolated and that is quite important if you're doing this sort of work because you do because this is going to be connected to the mains um, and so it is going to be tied to a ground in effect you don't want to go and stick your multimeter uh, ground side or negative to another one that's several thousand volts difference if you're actively connected to your mains if you don't have your isolation, you can have things go bang. Given that this is 9 volts, you could probably get away with putting um, a 3S LiPo pack in here. Be curious to see what the actual voltage is required on the main board. There we go. That was a workout. It's past midnight here, and it is flippin' hot. I mean, really flippin' hot. I'm sweating. Uh, I need an IEC. Another cheap nasty one. I should point out, before when I was saying about how we have the protected uh, insulated zones here, that's not an, uh, it's not a mandatory standard in Australia, but it is just one that we tend to use a lot for consumer products that don't require a large amount of power. Okay, so plug it in. Get the power. Let's see. Holy truth, it beeps a lot. Well, that's a pretty good. I reckon you can probably read that plus or minus maybe 15 to 20 degrees. That's pretty acceptable on the bench. That's going to be at about eye level anyway, so it will look like this. Backlight, well, that's very pretty. That actually looks a lot better on the screen than it does in real life, interestingly. In real life, it's contrast is a little excessive. Uh, it's not sufficient to really make it worthwhile. Like I said, it definitely looks really good on the recording, but not so much in real life. In real life, this is a better mode. Uh, let's see. What have we got? Diode mode. My goodness, that beeping is annoying already. 3.1. Okay, so the maximum diode mode probably going to get is 3.1 volts. That's acceptable for what we're doing. My big uh, Protec 608 will go up to 20 volts, which is good if you're doing Zener testing. But for continuity, short detection, things like that, 3.1 is more than ample. Let's see, aims. Yeah, it all just. Nice. That does tens of microvolts. Convenient. Uh, hundreds of microvolts, rather. You've got millivolts, 100, 200 millivolts, uh, microvolts. Yep, you can tell it's midnight or past. Capacitance mode, I might actually be using that later. Temperature, let's see what it reckons it is here. 
It reckons it's only 26. I can tell you right now, it feels a damn sight hotter than that. I think the humidity is up at about 90%. Well, it uh, looks like it's working, so let's see. I'm going to have to find a way to show you this while I work on it. It's a little hard because the cord at the back here is kind of pushing things out of the way. Let's see if I can bring the... No, no, no. I'm just going to cause trouble. Hmm. Oh, well. It works. And what I'm going to do is I will probably show this more when I'm doing the programming of it because that's really where the fun's going to be. Now these units, as far as I can tell, do not just blindly push the data out. They require you to query them and say, hey, what's your current setting? What's your voltage uh, reading on that? Send it to me and then you uh, display that. The upside of it being like that is, it, and because of the fact that it's all uh, touch button mode select, is I can programmatically change the modes as required, which can be quite convenient if, uh, say in flex board view, if I'm going through a diagnostic sequence and I say it's time to change over to diode mode, please go and check this particular value, then I can tell this particular meter to do that rather than having to rely on the person to press the appropriate button. So that's a positive advantage um, of the more complicated interface. All right, we're going to shut that down. I think we'll leave it at that. It's um, not as pretty as I want it. I really was hoping for a whiter case, but uh, these beige yellow ones will take me back to my years in the 1980s and 1990s. And yeah, that power supply there will live for the moment, see if it misbehaves, but more than likely I will look at upgrading that in the future. But I think for now what we have to do is get programming and I'll leave that for the next video. So until then, I'll catch you later.